Alright, we're live. I'll just let some people roll in and then I'll start off with the first question. Yeah, no worries. The chat's kind of going wild. <clears throat> I've not actually brought it up. Are you doing it on YouTube or Twitch? I'm um, on YouTube. All oh, right, fair enough. I'll tweet it out. So, I guess I guess the, the big thing that a lot of people know you for is um, the whole getting arrested um, for teaching your dog how to do, you know, the Nazi salute. And um, you were pretty uh, stubborn on not paying the fine, which I, I, I admire you for. And I'm, I'm just wondering how that works out and what your experience has been with the UK legal system. Uh, it's been shit. To be perfectly oh, yeah. honest, like, uh, still, still sort of hard to like, wrap my head around the fact that I got arrested literally for offending people, you know, I didn't assault anyone, I didn't steal anything, I didn't cause any damage to any property or anything like that, and literally mm -hmm. all I did was hurt people's feelings and yeah, I got fucking arrested yeah. over it, and uh, they were they were really trying to fucking nail my balls to the wall as mm -hmm. well. Like uh, the prosecutor, uh, at one point, like halfway through the trial, tried to increase my charge to a more severe one, where instead of my maximum sentence being one year in prison, uh, it would have been five years <laughs> in prison. Like he, he tried to do that. Like even and even he, and the the judge rejected it. Luckily, because even the judge was looking at him, going like fucking hell, dude. Like mm -hmm. that's. That's about much, uh -huh. but yeah, and then I got fucking fined eight hundred pounds. Told them to stick it up their arse. I'm not going to fucking pay it, and mm -hmm. then uh, they just seized the money out of my bank account anyway. Huh. That's uh, well, yeah. I was wondering about that. If you actually like got away with not paying it, that would be funny. But I mean, if they're gonna like sentence you like that, they might as well throw your dog in jail while they're at it. It's so ridiculous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> fucking one of the one of the guys that appeared as a witness at the trial, uh, tried to say that what I was doing was animal abuse. <laughs> Teach, <laughs> teaching your dog a trick is animal <laughs> abuse, isn't it? Yeah, okay then. Um, it's just it's so weird to me with the, the that they go out after that type of stuff and yet they, there's so many like holes in the legal, legal system where they don't um, take care of other like very um, apparent issues. They'd rather go out after you for that, so. Oh yeah, it was a total, complete, utter waste of police time, resources, and taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's all it was. Like there, there's loads of people out there that fucking hate me and don't like what I stand for, but they all said that I should never have been arrested. Like, well, you know why? Why was I caught, and why were police officers wasting their time on bullshit like this? Mm -hmm. But you're, you're seeing it happen all the time in Britain. Like, we've even got, uh, I don't know, did you hear about the Chelsea Russell case? Um, I don't, I don't know if I have. There was a girl who uh, posted uh, rap lyrics on her Instagram, uh, and it was actually in remembrance of a boy that lived in her area. He was a young boy, and he he got knocked over by a car, and he got killed. Mm -hmm. So she posted uh, rap lyrics from her, from, like, onto her Instagram as a sort of a tribute to him. And because the rap lyrics had the N word in them, she got arrested, charged, and found guilty. Um, <laughs> yeah, legit. That's God. that is how bad Britain is. If you post anything <laughs> online and someone finds it offensive, something that is completely subjective, you know, different people are offended by different things. Then you you get arrested and you can mm -hmm. go to jail for that. Uh huh. My God, you <laughs> you can run a, a rape gang all you want, but if you say the N word on the internet, you're done for. 
I guess. Well, I think that's because it's been revealed that some people in the government were actually involved in that, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna comment on Jesus that. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I don't want to I don't, wanna, I don't wanna get fucking sued, but uh, arrests have been made, which I was quite surprised by. Usually they get away with that shit. <laughs> Jesus. All right, people are telling me to turn your volume up. I'm. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to understand me anyway. <laughs> uh, Alright. Um, I think what ties into that is, is uh, you becoming a... You're trying to become an MEP for uh, UKIP, right? Yeah, yeah. That, was, that wasn't even really my idea. I just sort of get asked mm -hmm. if I want to do it. And it's a... Uh, I'm fourth in the list. Which means I literally have zero chance of actually winning uh. unless UKIP somehow gets like all of the votes in Scotland, because Scotland only has six seats up for grabs, and uh, I, I decided to put my name for it anyway just because I knew it would cause a bunch of screeching, mm -hmm. and it did. Like the media, have, the media have came after me. They managed to get my fucking Discord shut down because they said. Oh, we, we went into your Discord, a, a shit post in Discord, and we caught you saying offensive things. Well, well yeah, of course you fucking did. <laughs> you went fucking into Discord shit. server. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, like, uh, it already gets shut down. Uh, the Discord gets shut down, but within half an hour, we had a new one up and running. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, like, well, you said it's, it's pretty much impossible, but if you were to become an MEP, what... What would you do uh, with that power? Well, the first thing is getting ready. Article th it's been rebranded, but I'm going to call it Article 13 just so everybody knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, basically it completely annihilates any concept of fair use in the European Union. And uh, the way it would work is uh, there would be an upload filter. So see if you're using someone else's song or someone else's video or someone else's news article then it would automatically be stripped away from online like and the problem is that totally forgoes fair use you might be commenting on it critiquing it transformative all those things that fall into fair use but what will happen is the upload you've seen algorithms like youtube's algorithm is fucked and does not work mm -hmm. the same way twitter and all that as well and uh, so what's going to happen is even if something does completely fall under fair use the algorithm is always going to play on the safe side and just delete it anyway. Hmm. So that basically means if you want to critique something, the, the way I, they're following the Chinese model. The way the what it's going to ultimately end up is if you critique anything that the government's doing, that's what's going to get removed from online. Basically, it'll never it'll never be out there in the public space. Yeah, that's that's the problem that's going to end up happening. But uh, the other thing as well is. It's already been tried, Article 13, and is that you know the link tax, basically if you wanted to share people's links and all that stuff, you would have to pay money. They trialed it, they trialed it in Spain, and see how Google News, Google News is a completely free service, you know, they just, they're just they just an aggregate news site, and uh, basically they were getting told, yeah, you need to pay all this money to the government if you want to run this free service, and Google went, well, nah, fuck you, and pulled out of Spain. <laughs> just pulled the fuck out and even though that was only a trial run and it's the trial's over google news still hasn't come back <laughs> to spain that's fucking and awesome in germany and in, in germany as well they tried to do this thing where it's like okay you can have your link shared without the tax but you need to opt in if you want it and see because all news sites want their links shared all that happened was literally every single one opted in let there, thereby making it completely useless, mm -hmm. completely pointless legislation. <laughs> it's only, they, they have no idea what they're doing. I went actually over there on the vote. I was actually in the building, and I, I'm so angry that... See, there was a bit where there's an area of the building that you're not allowed to film in, right? And this area is the only place where MEPs would talk to us because they knew we couldn't film them. Mm -hmm. And none of them had. They're all fucking boomers. They, they they barely know how to work their hotmail account, and they're sitting there trying to legislate the internet. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. I was talking to one guy about algorithmic technology, and his response was, "What's an algorithm?" <laughs> like they, they they're fucking clueless boomers. They have no idea. What a fucking idiot. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It all. <coughs> it's inevitable that they're all gonna be, um, boomers in there, lagging way behind. Um modern technology it's just 
it's a shame, but I, I, yeah, like as you said, it's it's always gonna backfire on them because I have no idea what they're talking about, and that's just how things work. Like with uh, YouTube recently, from all the demonetization, like Google lost like seventy billion dollars. So there's always gonna be like a, a some sort of unforeseen repercussion from these things that they're not gonna get away with uh, censoring the internet. That's the the seventy billion. Uh... YouTube loss. I was I was going to do a video on it for the second channel, but I never got around to it. That's just been complete, utter, absolute mismanagement by YouTube themselves. Like they've even got the community like screeching at them, telling them this is what we want, this is what you should do. Here mm -hmm. are all these much, much, much better solutions. Because like, see, see, when it comes to YouTube, right? YouTube has literally the biggest reach in the world to younger audiences. So see, when it, see when it comes to advertiser space for younger people. YouTube has the big swinging dick in that regard. They are literally the world leaders in it. Yeah. They literally are. And they should be using that to their advantage, but they aren't. They just keep bending the knee to the outrage mob. Okay, we'll pull ads from this. Okay, we'll pull ads from that. Mm -hmm. And all that does is gets everyone pissed off and stops them from using the platform. Yeah. I mean... They, 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 they want cat videos. That's what YouTube wants. They yeah. want makeup tutorials and cat videos. So essentially, <laughs> they want YouTube to be shit. Mm -hmm. They want it to go back to the old times, but, you know, after it's like the the content on there has changed so much you can't go back and it's a really bad decision for them to keep bending the knee because once you start doing that you like set a precedent of like both sides will hate you like the one that wants you to censor yourself uh, you already censored yourself and if you don't continue doing that they're gonna think you're you know like your 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 double standards and the 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 side that's against political correctness will just hate you forever for censoring yourself in the first place and the um you know, mob rule that, that wants you to continue censoring will never be permanently pleased. It's always, you know, a few months later they want a new thing and you're just going to have to keep eliminating uh, your, your biggest sources of revenue to please them. And it's just, it doesn't work as a business model. No, it doesn't. They, they, they see the outrage mob, they never will be pleased. I mean, mm -hmm. see us, like, we'll, we'll be so pleased if we just get left alone. Yes. <laughs> but, like, stop, stop, see the way things are, leave it. Here's, here's the beautiful thing about it. You don't even need to do anything. Just let us make our content. Yeah. Stop striking our videos for stupid fucking reasons. And all this type of shit, you know, if people don't like our stuff, then they, then they don't have to watch it. <laughs> like, like I, I, see if people hate me. Oh, I seen your video in my recommended, and I clicked on it, and you said an offensive. Th Why the fuck did you click on it then? Mm -hmm. Like okay. that's that's what I don't get. Mm -hmm. they, they'll never please the outrage mob. <laughs> they never will. So it's literally never been done. So I don't know why they're trying. Mhm. Mm um. Yeah. I. It's just. It doesn't work. But it's like. Uh, it's like having a sort of. Like short-term vision they're not they're not thinking in the long term at all they're just thinking what will take the pressure of off us in the short term because they don't want any pressure at all but if they if they were just to endure the outrage mob then in the long term people would just you know would would stop asking them to censor themselves but they're they're always thinking in the short ter short term what's what's gonna like please the advertisers yeah, they'll, they'll be, they are just doing it from a sort of a money focus, like, in the present day, they're not thinking at all about the future, because it's, there is going to come a point where, see, our side of YouTube do make up a considerably large amount of its users, like, there are, like, we are outnumbered by normies mm -hmm. on YouTube, but we still account for a very large portion of the audience, like, we probably are the most active YouTube community as far as consuming content, Yeah, and YouTube by messing with that particular group are screwing themselves over in the long term because that group are the most dedicated. They're most, most interested in YouTube culture, YouTube content, YouTube drama, and all this type of stuff. Like There is a lot of watch time, a lot of advertiser revenue to be made there, and if the if YouTube keep messing with that audience, then what's going to happen is you know it's going to be like MySpace where everyone just sort of migrated to Facebook because it yeah. became the new cool thing, but even Facebook starting to circle the drain now because they are mismanagement as well. It's just I don't know why they're repeating repeating problems of the past. If you fuck with the user base, the user base will leave. Yes. And that's it. And that, it leave to the tune of fucking a seventy billion dollar loss. Um, I think, yeah, and I hopefully the user base will be able to leave if this if this, they just keep you know uh, changing the terms of service and and making them more restricted. The only um scenario where I wouldn't see people being able to leave is if we start getting internet regulation that makes it too hard for 
you know, um, uh, new social medias to, to pop up because it's just too expensive to comply. But I, I don't know if that'll happen or not. Hopefully it's, it's, it's always easy for, um, you know, new people to come into the ring and say, okay, we're going to have a completely free platform where it's going to be, you know, nobody can really be censored unless you're, like, breaking the law. <coughs> Well, that's, that's, that's what's actually happening with Article 13 in the European Union. See, because uh, the sheer amount of content that gets uploaded online, it's literally, there, there literally aren't enough people on Earth to screen all of that content. There's literally mm -hmm. so much. But, uh, they expect this new little startup with maybe about, you know, 15 staff. They might start a social network that ends up having, you know, hundreds of thousands of users, which is quite small as far as social networks go. But that is a metric shit ton of content mm -hmm. and how are these people with a small team supposed to go through all of that they can't so they need to pay big huge money for algorithms that you know google owns most of the patents to so basically they literally can't do it so this has it's actually gatekeeping the internet basically yeah. new business won't be able to form and grow based on this like and not all regulation is bad i do want it to be kept to a minimum I I, the only regulation i feel should be brought in is regulation that protects the rights of people you know don't force people to comply with shit but it's a case of you know prevent people from doing shit that would inf infringe on other people's rights like for example I, b I feel we're at the point now where online is the new social square I, f I feel that we, we are fast approaching that point and it probably will one day be considered a breach of someone's human rights to remove them from that I, I feel that, that we are approaching days like that I mean, it's certainly possible. It's with with the younger generations. Uh, I mean, Generation Z is is connected enough as is, like to the to the internet. I'm just thinking about Generation Alpha, how <laughs> connected they're gonna be because they're the ones, you know, Fortnite dancing all day. So. <coughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. I've noticed like a lot of the younger people, like we get in uh, UKIP, and like a lot of the younger people that I speak to, like can see stuff like this, they see things like Article 13, they see things like speech laws, they see things like this and that, and they think that we are the generation that are going to literally see freedom die. <laughs> like that's, and that's, that's the thing they always say to me, like one, one person said that to me, and this, this, guy, this guy was like probably about 14, 15, and he said those words to me, like, I feel that my generation is going to be the generation that sees freedom die. And I had nothing to say to the kid, and I just felt I was so blackpilled after he said that to me. I, mean, I was just like, oh, fuck, sorry, sorry, man, I've got, I've got nothing for you. I don't yeah. know how to make you feel better. <laughs> I try. I try to be at least uh, more hopeful about it than that, because if I were to, like, stay in that mindset, I, just, I would just, like, stop making videos. I'd just be, like, lie down and rot, you know, like, it's, <laughs> it's over for us. So I, I try to um, stay hopeful, not be too blackpilled about it. Um, it's, it does get it does get hard though. Like that's why I I still make freedom of speech content on my second channel, but I made my new channel mostly about my series Absolute Mad Lads, which is just me talking about crazy and interesting people from history. Because see, when I was making all the free speech content, it was just constantly me never delivering good news. It was just constant. Mm -hmm. This is why free speech is fucked today. This is why free yeah. speech is fucked this week. And it was just. A never-ending cycle of that, and I, I was getting just absolutely depressed. So I mm -hmm. went, I'm going to, going to move on to something that actually cheers me the fuck up. So that's that's why I moved on to the new stuff. Yeah, that's that's the thing with like news channels. I'm not, I'm not sure I would be able to do that just because like, it's if you're just if you're simply reporting the news, it's it's sort of like bland. But if it's a, if it's a lot of things going on, and even if it's an eventful week, it's usually not in a good way. Like a lot of bad things going on, and that. I would see how that depresses somebody. I mean, like, what's the goal with your new uh, YouTube content? It's just sort of, it's fun and it's interesting. People like it. It's just mainly to entertain. Like on my second channel, a lot of my a lot of my stuffs about freedom of speech on there, and I can do more short form, off the cuff videos. You know, no no professional editing or like that. I can just switch my webcam on and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that that's a lot better at getting the point across because you're not you know I, I do make a few jokes and all that as well but i'm a bit more serious on my second channel and yeah. i just feel that that works better like the first channel i'm trying to make just entertainment because i wasn't the only person getting depressed like my subscribers were getting depressed as well and they were just sort of 
they, they would just sort of went into this whole the world is ending state of mind. So I moved on to sort of try and cheer everyone up. Yeah, it's it's important. Like entertainment like that is is uh, more important than people think. Like they think it just it's you know whatever cheer people up. Um, I, I'm not, well, like a lot of people think of it as like time wasting, but it is important to like hit that audience because it's not like there are certain people who are not um, going to be entertained by the normie shit, and like we're the only type of people that can make something that's entertaining for them, and it's uh it's uh, really important to get to them as well. Yeah, it's, we, it also does have like a sort of unique sort of sense of comedy, and I think it's it's just been influenced by the fact that most of us grew up browsing 4chan that's that, that, yeah. that literally is, what it is there's a type of comedy we we like it we enjoy it we enjoy it with each other and we just kind of want to be left alone to enjoy that form of comedy but you're seeing attacks coming on it from fucking everywhere like i like you, even that you see how the whole uh you know despite despite 1350 you know whole joke and all that everyone goes that literally inspires white nationalism no no it fucking doesn't no, it doesn't. Just let us enjoy a joke among ourselves. Like, because we look at edgy memes, it doesn't mean we're about to start goose-stepping towards Poland. That's <laughs> not how it works. <laughs> All right, like, but that's, they, they want to try and get it across as that is how it works when they're, they're, there's literally no evidence <laughs> of that at all. Yeah. But they're still trying to push it so that they can <clears throat> so that they can shut down the type of comedy that we like. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a really, well, it's an evil tactic, but it's a really effective tactic on their side is they're yeah they they even though their claims are completely baseless they don't really care about it it's more about like demoralization and if they can take people like us down who are the entertainment for i don't know yeah the people who are politically incorrect who grew up browsing 4chan um that's going to really demoralize them and and uh, help take out the opposition i suppose it's a uh, it's defining what the new extreme is so like uh... For for example, like they they don't give a fuck about the extreme left. If you're in Antifa, you can have as many Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube accounts as your heart desires. Like yeah. literally, chanting punch a Nazi, you know, <coughs> all day long, right? But if you look at the things like the extreme right, you would have people like, uh, you know, actual, you know, genuine far writers, right? Genuine ones. They go, and then what? Do, what do, they get banned from social media and completely depersoned. And then what do you have after that? Like what they basically the bar for what is extreme has been lowered Mm -hmm. so then for example who might be after that well it might be uh, Milo Yiannopoulos so they deperson him get rid of him then the bar's lowered again and oh Alex Jones there you go he get rid of him and then the bar's been lowered again and eventually it's going to get to a point where the bar's been lowered so much that we are the extreme we are the extreme because of our edgy jokes and edgy comedy and spicy bants and all this type of shit and then they'll get rid of us and that bar is just going to keep falling and falling until we're left with nothing but fucking cat videos and punch punch a Nazi rhetoric. Yeah, I yeah, mean they're, they're not going to stop. They won't mm-hmm. stop. Yeah, it's all about the the sort of definition of what's offensive is always um, relative to the time because we're we're they're talking about it from a society's point of view. It, it, no matter what you say, if it's like if it's outside of the box in a way that they don't want it to be, like if it. If it goes against the narrative in the wrong way, um, they're they're just you're, you're a Nazi. They'll, they'll they'll assign some sort of term to you that's derogatory and will make it easier for them to um, make you like an alien and uh, the villain of the story. Oh yeah, they're creating a boogeyman. That's that's what it is. It's a case of uh, nobody can really come after the points that you've made. They they just they want to disagree with you just on principle. Basically, you are a bad man. It's literally orange man bad. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it is. They just want an excuse to hate you. And if you start hitting out with arguments and hitting out with points that they can't really refute or come against, they just go for the Hail Mary and go, you're a Nazi. And apparently they think in their mind that that means they've won the argument because mm-hmm. they hope, you know, if I call you a Nazi and I get everyone to believe that you're a Nazi, then they'll just completely disregard your ideas no matter how correct they actually are. Yeah. And it's because they, they can't argue. Anyone that just throws around the terms Nazi and fascist is just them admitting I'm a retard and I can't argue. Mm-hmm. That's literally that's literally all they've admitted to. Yeah, they're admitting their intentions for... Um, yeah, most of them are um, just retarded and don't know how to argue and don't know how to like actually tackle any of your points, so they'll throw the, those uh, blanket terms out. 
but I have a suspicion, and I, I talked about this in my new video, that some of them aren't just retarded, but they, they're, they're truly, like, sinister in the way that they want, they have, like, an intention to take all of us out, and that's the most effective way they, they see of doing it, and it's, uh, like, a, a weird sociopathic thing. Yeah, no, there's some of the most malicious people that I have ever come across are from that side. Like, they were, they are prepared to completely ruin and destroy your life for something as simple as you told an offensive joke. They are more than happy to do that to you. I mean, the, the punishment does not fit the crime, but see, in their mind, they genuinely think that you're a Nazi, you're a fascist, so... They could. They probably feel justified in their head of walking up to you and slicing your throat in the street. Yeah. And they probably would get held as a fucking hero for it because that's that's basically the culture that we have now. Mm -hmm. Basically, I mean, see see if Tommy Robinson and his family got murdered. Do you think? Do you think like the far left would be going? Oh, that's terrible. That's so horrible. No. Well, they fucking wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. They'd be they'd be cheering and having parades in the street. Yeah. And all that type of shit. Like that. That's that's the type of people that these people are. Mm -hmm. They're not like, yeah, that's just what they want. They want, you know, destruction for you. And yeah, a lot of them are fueled by delusions of heroism and that they're on the right side of history and that they're going to be in all the, you know, history textbooks you know, you know, 100 years down the line as the, the people who saved it all from, I don't even know what. It's uh, very strange delusions that they have about themselves. Yeah, they, no, they think they think they're heroes. They pro they probably see themselves as the same vein as the fucking U.S. soldiers storming Omaha Beach to mm -hmm. go fight the Nazis. They probably see themselves in the same way as that. Yeah. Um. So, like, have you besides being arrested have have they ever like has anybody ever attacked you or have you ever gotten threatened in a serious way for anything you've done? Nothing, nothing that I was afraid of. Um, the, the, the first time it happened was actually a few weeks uh, after I got arrested. Uh, this is back when I was living in Colt Bridge. Uh, there mm -hmm. was a old alcoholic neighbour that we had, and she, she, you, she was the type of person you would usually see her out in the street at four o'clock in the morning, like screaming at a stray cat, yeah, or some <laughs> shit, right? And then uh, we were leaving the house one day, and she was shouting tons of shit at me like from across the street and I just sort of rolled the car window down going what the fuck's your problem and she's going you're a Nazi bastard you're a Nazi bastard and I just went oh, okay right, thanks bye and I just drove away <laughs> I came back home to find that she'd went down to the park pulled the fucking pulled the dog shit bin out and threw the bag like against my door like so there was basically like 30 bags of dog shit just Holy splattered fuck. all over my fucking door and the, the, this, is, this is the thing that was funny. I called the cops, right? Because I, I was going to go across the road and sort it out myself. But mm -hmm. my, my girlfriend, she she talked me out of it and said, just phone the police. Called the police, told the police what happened. The police came. The police came back across and said, yeah, she's been arrested. And this, this blew my mind. She wasn't arrested for throwing dog shit all over my front door. She was arrested for calling me a Nazi bastard. And she got charged with hate crime as well. And I was I was just sitting there <coughs> with the police. I don't give a fuck that she called me a Nazi bastard. I care about the fact that my front door is covered in dog shit. And she did like the cops just the, the cops just weren't grasping that, and they arrested her for something that I didn't even care about. I mean that like they it's almost as if they care about words more than actions. You know, words no, are so much more important than you know anything you could physically possibly do. Dog shit all over your front door? Nah, but the fact that she called you a Nazi when she did it is the real issue here. Yeah, that's that's why I was even saying to the cops, like, I don't care. She called me a name. Oh no. Like to, to pardon me while I lie on my fainting couch for five minutes, like I don't care. I care about the fact that I had to get the marigold gloves on and clean up dog shit. Yes. Like it was it was in my letterbox and everything, right? That's what I was pissed about. Good God. But, yeah, but there was other situations as well where I've had people in the street threatening me and all that type of shit. No, no one's ever actually swung a punch because mm -hmm. I've I've always made it clear, you know, if you if you, if you hit me, you know, get ready to get in a fucking fight because yeah. I'm not like I will I will kick the shit out of you if you try anything, and I always make that very clear. And uh, so I've had people around me threatening me, but no one no one's ever tried anything. Hmm. Have any like um, journalists or famous people have have come around trying to smear you or like 
Because I've had people, oh, yeah. I've had a bunch of journalists like emailing me trying to get interviews, and I look up who they are, and they just write articles about normal ass people calling them Nazis. I'm like, oh, I see what you're trying to do here. <laughs> I don't don't ever talk to journalists. Oh, of course just, not. Just don't ever do it. They're serpents. Mm -hmm. They are honestly, they are the lowest form of beast. Like the only thing they, even though you're a person that they they don't even really know, they don't know much about you. You, in their eyes, are their next paycheck. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to write an article that's going to absolutely ruin your life, but I don't give a fuck because I need to pay my rent on my studio apartment and buy my avocado toast. That's yeah. how much your life is worth to me. Right? These people are scum. They are absolute fucking filth. They don't care about whose lives they're in. They just care about making money, mm -hmm. which is why I have, I have no time for them. Don't want to talk to them. Like They are, they are absolute utter filth in my eyes. I, I would agree with that. I mean, the the only one, I, yeah, the the main one I responded to, I um I tweeted out my my email response to her, and it was quite, uh, the <coughs> harsh one. I think that's the only way I would ever, um, address them because it's very, because she was like trying to call my like, I don't know how, but she found my dad and like then found his email and started emailing him and then started like texting and calling him too calling him like a and saying he was like a racist and a nazi for letting me like make the videos that i do or he was like he was behind all my videos and was brainwashing me or something like that so she completely <laughs> deserved everything i said to her <laughs> nah, I, I just usually send back the cardo milos memes that's all i do now. that's awesome if you can force them to look at that for their job, that's the best thing you could possibly do. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still waiting for one of them to actually print it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, this this is what he said in reply. <laughs> you know, just, just this hunky Latino fella dancing. Like, I'm, I'm still waiting on it. No, no one's done it yet, but mm -hmm. hopefully one day one of them will actually print it. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what were you, you mentioned, like, you know, browsing fortune, whatever. What, what were you up to at my age? Um, fuck. I was just believe it or not, I, st I started on full channel on bloody wallpaper general. <laughs> That's right. I used to I used to make wallpapers. <laughs> that was that was that was the start of my shit. I went I, I went on B because everyone the, the first thing everyone heard, well back then but it's probably poll now but back yeah. then the way the way everyone heard about four chan was B. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went on B and just thought, all right, whatever. But then I got interested in Wallpaper General. So I did that fucking gay shit for a while. But then I started hanging around on B for all the fucking stuff like the Habble Hotel raids and all that type of shit. And then mm -hmm. that's, where I, that's where I just sort of hung around on B. Hmm. Like, that's, that's how I got started. So uh, did you have any jobs before you got into the YouTube stuff? Or um, what were the jobs? I Private security in call centers. Yeah. Uh, private security is not exactly the most stable uh, sort of thing. Um, basically, you just sort of get a text and they tell you, can you do a shift this week and all that. So I was working in a call center and also doing security. Um, when the Nazi punk shit dropped, I, uh, I got fired from a call center job, which I, I could not have given less of a fuck about. Yeah. I, I honestly could not have cared. Like They, they did me a favor by fucking firing me. And uh, then after that, I was just sort of in and out of security. But, like, everywhere I tried to get a job, nowhere wanted to hire me, just purely because of all the shit the newspapers had wrote about me. Mm-hmm. And they don't well. so fucking... So, yeah, so basically the only thing I could do was YouTube. Mm -hmm. That was literally it. So that's so that's how, that's pretty much what I've done. Hmm. And, uh, I know, still, but I still got the occasional shift as a bouncer. Well... That's a, yeah, I guess it is kind of like a, a blessing in disguise type of thing. I'm, uh, <laughs> if nobody wants to hire you, I'm, I'm wondering, am I, like, how my future, if, if it ever happens that I have to get, like, a, a normal job, if uh, anybody will be want, willing to hire me. <coughs> they, 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 to be honest, they might, they might not. Like even even if you turn around, even if you turn around and try and give them the whole excuse of, oh I was a, I was a kid when I did that and yeah. blah blah blah, they they don't care, they don't care, they're just going to say you're you're bad for business, so you are, you are not allowed to pay your rent or your bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like so yeah, the, the, the only 
I think the only choice would be for you to actually start your own business or something like that. Because, in fact, even even if you did manage to do that, people would still try and shut you down. Yeah. You know, someone yeah. you've someone you've offended in the past or something. I mean, I think it's worth it. Like, just given how much support I get on YouTube from people, like people are people are so unbelievably nice, and like the Patreon has blown up and everything like that. Um, I think it's it's definitely worth it to deal with the backlash because I think what I do is important and. You know, hopefully, hopefully I don't have to get a real job because I would rather <laughs> just make videos online. Sounds like a pretty nice gig. So yeah, it's it's all right. It's just that the only the only thing I hate about it is the insecurity because I could I could wake up tomorrow and my channel could be gone. Well, yeah, and, and I I know that that day is coming. Mm -hmm. I know it's coming. There is going to come a day where where Susan Bajiski is just going to Thanos click YouTube and just wipe out you know any half. That is uh, even remotely associated with right wing or edgy comedy. Like there, there is going to come a day. I think it would probably start with what's that special restricted mode that they put your videos in, where the, the like oh, bar yeah. it doesn't show up in search results and all that stuff. The like bar is gone. The comments are gone. I think they're going to start doing that to everyone, and then yeah. eventually they're just going to yeet everyone from YouTube completely, or we're just going to be perpetually living in the the ghost say to YouTube almost like we're like <laughs> YouTube's dark matter where well, mm -hmm. you can't you can't see it or find it but you know that it's there. Mm -hmm. Like dark YouTube. Well I would yeah. I would hope that uh, that happens like all at once and before there's like too much regulation so that like like everybody that's remotely entertaining is like kicked off at once so that like they a, a new website like has to pop up to address that market because I think that would um I think like a, a, a jump ship is in order. That would be my, you know, I, ideal thing. But it's too hard to, for like just a couple of people to start it up. Well, that's the thing is they try to. I know that BitChute are doing that, and they have had uh, some metric of success. They see the only problem with it is see if a new social media platform starts. The first people that are going to appear is uh, the ones that have been banned from the main platforms here. Yeah. They have, you know, the right-wingers, the edgy kids and all that type of stuff. And then all that's going to happen is the the media are just going to say, this is a right far-right website, this is a Nazi website, all mm -hmm. the Nazis use it, blah, 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 and all this type of stuff. And what will happen is that will put off anyone from using that website. So basically the website will never gather traction. They'll never gain any traction at all. Yeah. So, so basically, it's going to be really difficult for a competitor to grow. But see if that day does come around, and a competitor actually manages to grow and get bigger and get more popular, then that is when YouTube are going to go, oh shit, and try and like fix all the problems. And go, no guys, don't leave. But by that point, it will be too late, and then everyone's just going to jump over, and then there'll be a there'll be a new, cooler, and better version of YouTube, which I feel ultimately will become more popular. And then YouTube, the old YouTube, is just going to be a shit way. You know, mm -hmm. just cat videos and makeup tutorials. Yeah, cat videos, Logan Paul, whatever. But like, even Logan Paul, like he he talked to Alex Jones recently. Like, I wonder how many people they'll they would be able to keep in that scenario. Like, and that's why I hope it would be a lot of a mainstream people kicked off at once, so that like the the journalist people can't um, pull the the marketing thing so su su successfully where they can be like, oh, Gab, only Nazis use Gab. You don't want to use Gab, whatever. You know that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's the thing that I didn't, I honestly didn't understand. Is see when that uh, shooting happened, everyone was like, "Oh, the shooter used Gab. The shooter posted on Gab and all that stuff," and everyone was saying, "Shut Gab down." And I think Gab got uh, they got dropped by GoDaddy as well, and they had to end up moving to a different host and all this stuff. And then, mm -hmm. but then the fucking Christchurch guy literally streamed on Facebook, and no one said that about Facebook. Yeah, I don't care. Facebook were just treated as immune mm -hmm. from any form of criticism over that. Yeah, because, well, because they, they think Facebook is great because Facebook is a little hovel for, you know, boomers and and uh, uh, a propagation of the, the normal normal news, the, the to, uh, sort of content they want you to see. So, of course, they're not going to critique it. Yeah, like, f Facebook does control an awful lot about, like, like, right now as well, after what's just happened, if you even praise uh Alex Jones, in any way, your comment gets deleted, and people are already posting evidence of that. Mm -hmm. people, like, people were posting stuff like, God bless Alex Jones, and they were getting a warning and getting their comment removed. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. It's just, <coughs> the more and more they do that, you know, the more and more they're just going to become unpopular, so I'd, 
a part, a part of me is sort of starting to think that maybe we need this to happen a little bit more so that the audiences using these social media platforms eventually go, you know what, fuck this, and just and just move. Mm-hmm. And the act, there actually is a, a mass exodus to like a, another site that ends up hopefully becoming popular and hopefully the website always, because all the alternatives right now are coming up with the, they're, they're basing themselves on we are a free speech platform. And I'm hoping that if they do end up becoming very popular and become the new thing, that they always maintain that message. Mm-hmm. I hope. Uh, were you always um, <laughs> like this? I guess against political correctness, or were your political views different earlier in your life? No, I was. O- <clears throat> I was always a little bit edgy. Um, I wasn't really. I didn't like political correctness, but I wasn't as against it as I am now. I think it's because I never really suffered its effects but in my yeah. younger days i was a i was a fucking commie in my younger days man like that's i fucking i got a tattoo a hammer and sickle and all this shit because i was a teenage retard jesus <laughs> yeah, that's rough that fucking, <coughs> aye, that, that, that shit don't wash off but like uh, yeah i was a communist for a number of years but then as i got older you know those beliefs sort of started to fade and all that like i, I still sort of held held those beliefs for quite a while but then you know, when things started going to shit, I realised that I was suffering under the very system that I was advocating for. Hmm. So that's when, obviously, I decided, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe freedom's actually a good thing. Yeah. Instead of me walking around being a fucking stupid tanky. Yeah. Well, that's it's good that you uh, came out of that. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Oh, I no, think you, you would think that, every, in loads of people's eyes, they still think that I'm a communist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, yeah, with those sorts of people, like, they don't really see that, um, how, how important freedom of speech is until it affects them directly, and you, you know, you start getting banned off platforms, and, you know, next thing you know, you have, like, an 800 pound fine from the government for, you know, teaching your dog a trick, so. Yeah, yeah, it's like, that is true, like, a lot of people don't realize how bad a law is or how bad a problem is until they get affected by it directly. Which is why a lot of these uh, journalists and fucking screeching SJWs you see all come from very, very white neighbourhoods with very, very nice yeah. gardens and mm-hmm. everybody's making, you know, 100k a year and all this stuff. And it's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Immigration's fine. There's no... We don't have any problems here. Yeah, but that's because they can't afford to live where you fucking are. Yeah. Right? It's the working class. It's the working class that need to fucking deal with that shit. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Right, that's like that's that's the problem that you end up getting. These fucking journalists and all that type of shit come from like extremely privileged backgrounds, but they want to lecture me about my privilege. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they like live outside of the the area where you see uh, all the problems unfolding. So they think you know, they think they're in their own little bubble, and they think everything's okay, and that we can afford to focus on like identity politics or some bullshit like that. No, uh, no, this, this the thing is, I'm fine with people having identity. If you want your identity, if you want to protect your identity, you yeah. have it. Just, just, just keep it out of politics. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't want any of that. I would like everyone to be free and have rights and all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I want, I want you to be free to do whatever you want to do. As long as you're not fucking with my shit, I'm not going to fuck with your shit. Yeah. Um, I'm also wondering, uh, like, what, what, what inspired all, like, the piercings and all that? <laughs> I was just into metal. I was just into metal when I was younger. Yeah, that, that was all it was. I, I, I was, I was just into metal music. That was the stuff on the scene, hmm. and all that. So that's that's what I decided to do. I, I get a lot of shit for that as well. <laughs> um, I, I don't really care. I don't really mind it. I mean, when when did you get that? Like, what, were you young enough where your parents would be? Um... I, mean, I was, I was like sixteen. Ah. Uh. I think I was like 16, so you're talking like literally 15 years ago. Jeez. Like, I, I got all this, yeah. Like, I was I was just a little, like, skateboarder, metal kid. Like, that's that's who I was when I was younger. Um, let me read some of the... I think that's all of the questions. Oh, wait, actually, um... Uh, when and how did you, like, meet Sargon and get into UKIP? Uh... He back when the back when the Nazi pug stuff kicked off, uh, he reached out to me and just said that he wanted to speak about the whole situation. We were talking in 
DMs and all that stuff. And then uh, he ended up, he asked me if I wanted to do an episode of uh, This Week in Stupid for him, which I did. And uh, from there, my channel got a little bit more popular. Uh, the UKIP thing all started uh, with me. Um, we were supposed to be hosting an event in Scarborough, and it was all... Oh, everything was all set up. This was like less than a week before the event. We had people flying over from Europe and America and all over the world to come here and like meet everyone and hang out and all that. And then what happened was uh, the venue shut us down because they get threats from a group called Stand Up to Racism who fucking hate us. And uh, they shut the event. They shut the event down, but didn't tell us. They didn't tell the event organisers. They didn't notify us at all. So even while the event had been shut down, we were still making preparations to get ready for it. And then uh, the only reason we found out is because we found out from the venue's Facebook. We were like, what do you mean? And like, they got contacted by the organizer. And they, he was like, why didn't you tell us? And they just shut us down. So see, because I was so annoyed, I made that video saying I'm joining UKIP. Mm -hmm. Just to sort of piss off, stand up to racism. And then it, I did it as a meme and it just fucking snowballed <coughs> from there. I was getting invited to speak at their conference and all this Holy stuff, shit. which I did. And then now, now I'm running as an MEP, mm -hmm. so I'm just sort of sitting here going, how the fuck did this happen? I did this, I did this as a meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's there's awesome. No, there's no brakes on this train. Hmm. <laughs> um, I think that's certainly, like, sort of uh, a good way to, to jab at the current political system that, you know, like, you know, online you know, meme personalities can get into politics. <coughs> um, yeah. Sargon's getting it pretty bad just now. Like, fuck me. Like, honestly, he's he's getting fucking annihilated by the media. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. they're really railing on him right now. Oh, yeah. Fucking quite... <laughs> it's quite fucking mental, but... I'm glad they only caught me being edgy in my Discord. Like that—that mm -hmm. that was it. They've not brought up. They, they tried. They tried to get at me. Like it was during the conference. Like I was on stage, and I told a rape joke, <laughs> and this fucking dourface bitch for Channel Four was like, "You said this on stage," and I was like, "Yep, I'm a comedian," and that that that, that was it. Argument over. Like she had nothing. After that, she just sat there like pissed off. <laughs> and the fact that I was like, "Yeah, I made a joke." Mm -hmm. Like he fucking deal with it. You went to an offensive comedy show and you saw offensive jokes. Oh my god, are you okay? Are you fine? <laughs> Sit down for a second. Like, mm -hmm. fuck off. I think that's when they get the, the angriest is when they try to confront you about something you said and they're expecting you to say, oh no, I didn't say that, so they can have a whole, you know, thing where they implicate you. I, they get the angriest when you just own up to what you said. You're like, yeah, I said that. What about it? Like... Yeah, because then they've got nothing. Mm -hmm. They have nothing. And it's like, oh, you said this horrible, terrible thing. It's like, okay, your point. Well, it was a bad thing to say. Okay, it was a bad thing to say. What is your point? <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're going to write in the papers that you said a bad thing. Okay, so you're going to basically do what you have always been doing, thereby making none of this make any difference whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You're going to make everyone think I'm an asshole. That's something that they already think. Oh, no, however well I live, however well I sleep at night when literally nothing has changed. <laughs> like, that's why, like, see how the whole, like, road to redemption thing, these these people don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they want you groveling at their feet just so they can have the satisfaction, but they're still going to write the article and fuck you over anyway, so mm -hmm. why? Why why apologise? Yeah. Just turn around and go, yeah, I said that, fucking deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tactics are so hollow. All you have to, like, literally all you have to do, and it's so sad that so many people, like, don't do this, is just say... When they confront you with things you say, you're just like, yeah, what about it? I don't give a shit. Like, you're gonna, oh, you're gonna write an article? Oh, I'm pissing and shitting myself. I can't believe you would do that. Just never apologize. And, like, they, they can't actually hurt you. They can't get in your head. They're, they're gonna write the article no matter whether you apologize or not. So don't, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't PewDiePie it. Yeah, the, 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 worst, the worst that's going to come from it is that everyone will think you're an asshole. So if you want to be in this game, you just need to learn to not give a shit what people think of you. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's the best way to get by. Or, you know, some some random SJW reporter or some fucking random account on Twitter where a hammer and sickle in its username doesn't like me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Whatever will I do? Like, who gives a shit? Yeah. They just want, you, want to make you think that the whole, you know, world's against you, but... 
you know, you still have a, you still have like a huge fan base at the end of the day, so it's all just a like little puppet show. None of it's real at all. Yeah, it's like, it's either, I've actually, quite a lot of people that I've actually managed to meet in the real world who didn't like me have came up and they've challenged me on stuff like, you said this and you said that and you have this opinion and I went, nope, never said that, never done that. Google it right now, see if you can find any evidence of me saying that and they can't. And mm -hmm. that's when I basically go, you've been lied to, here's what I actually believe, this is what. And it's just that's that's just what the media does. Like they talk about, oh, oh to, to this all this hatred and evil and horrible shit. It's them. It's them that's doing it. It's them that's contributing to it. Yeah. By lying about everyone. <coughs> um. Do you have any like views on the, the American political situation right now, or are you not like into that at all? Um. Just sort of a little bit. Like uh, I seen Trump tweet out the other day. He says that he's monitoring the uh, censorship of conservative voices from social media. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that was just all talk or something. I don't know what he's actually going to do about it because I know a lot of people have said for a while we're uh, talking about a a bill of internet rights. Well, you know, you would have like First Amendment protections, but on the internet. Um, I don't know what the hell's going to happen with that. But as for American politics, I don't follow a lot of it. Like, I know everyone was screeching about the Mueller report and, you know, Kavanaugh and all that type of stuff. And mm -hmm. I know sort of the basics of those, but I haven't properly looked into them. I'm, I'm more interested in British politics. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's no need to, like... Because most of the stuff that happens here is, you know, frivolous anyways. Like, nothing ever comes out of it and nothing ever changes. It's just, like, it's meaningless to, to pay attention to it anyways. Yeah, yeah. Some of it doesn't even matter, really. Yeah. Um, are you at all religious, or are you atheist? Oh, oh <laughs> shoot. I'm done, I, you you oh. cut out for me. Sorry, my internet keeps going down. I think Susan's oh, trying no, to snipe me. No, that's cool. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not Christian. I'm not Jewish, yeah, despite what people might tell you. Um, I'm also, you know... A, Sort of, but not in the airy fairy supernatural bullshit sense. It's more a, it's more a sort of doctrine of personal development. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a bit, I'm a bit private about it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh... I, I don't, I don't believe in any supernatural bullshit or anything like that. I don't believe any of that nonsense. Hmm. Yeah. Well, fair enough. <coughs> You're not like browsing X every night. No, 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 none of that. <laughs> um. Uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, Generation Z? I've got a feeling that they are they are probably going to be who saves us. Because they're the ones that are using the internet. They're be literally being raised mm -hmm. by the internet. And they have a much better understanding of the way things are than the fucking boomers in parliament. So I've got a, I've got a feeling that uh, they, they might be what saves us. That's great. I hope so too. I hope to... Uh... <laughs> I hope yeah, to. You've, uh, got, you've got a you've got a fucking job to do. Yeah, I gotta unite them <laughs> as the lieutenant of the Zoomer army at heart. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll read through the uh, super chats, and then I'll, I guess I'll let you go because it's been about an hour. Um, uh, considered interviewing Sticks, Hex, and Hammer. That's a possibility. Holy sheet, single greatest crossover of all time. That's correct. Um, UK laws are becoming more subjective. Tyranny. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, yeah. uh, holy shit, Marcus wasn't expecting to find you on Soul's channel. Um, <coughs> stop grooming kids with your Nazi ideas, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I keep bringing people on. And I, I, I suppose I'm getting brainwashed by uh, just having conversations by people. And I know it's all jokes, but some people genuinely believe that. I think it's crazy that uh, we're not allowed to have cross-generational discussions. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I always find it entertaining that uh, poll humor somehow became a political ideology. Mm -hmm. I always find that quite fun. I think it's quite good that mo most modern pollies uh, didn't get the joke. <laughs> it's just... Quite ironic. 
Um, hashtag taxation is slavery. Um, you have probably been asked this many times, how old are you? 14. Um, I had like a journalist say that I looked like a nine year old. <laughs> she was trying to, you know, smear me and insult me covertly. <laughs> um, Russell Brand monitoring pop stars. Um, is Talia Levin still harassing you? No, I don't think so. I think she gave up bothering my dad. Um,. Dank, are you still planning on going to IRL? IRL? Oh, is that means? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be going there. Well, if, if my if my American visa gets approved, because, you know, convicted criminal and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, get better lighting, you spastic. No can do. I'm doing this out of my small bedroom, so this is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> um, uh... I just came like a couple of minutes ago. Can someone explain what's happening? <laughs> oh, just an interview. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, also, do you have any questions for me? Um, nothing really. But I was just more of a sort of a point of advice. Uh, I feel that you should go into comedy. I really do. Hmm. Yeah, because I think I think you're very very good at what you do. Um, you've got a You've got your head on straight, and you've definitely mastered the art of a, of a joke. Thanks. And I, I think you've got the mind for it, so I think that's something you should focus on. I mean, yeah, I've, well, that's sort of been my goal for a while. I'm trying to, like, you know, um, negotiate things with my parents to, to get more time to spend on, I guess, making videos and, and uh, developing uh, uh, my style, I guess. And yeah, that, that I, I would love to go into comedy, but... You know, as you said, it's always it's always an unstable thing. It's always risky, but yeah, I mean, I yeah, I have I have uh, considered that for a while. And, you know, thanks for the encouragement. No, it's honestly the edgy comedy is it's it's almost like see how we live in the age of like political correctness and all that type of stuff. It's almost like uh, prohibition in the United States. You would get the you know the, the underground speakeasies that you could only get into if the guys knew you and they knew you weren't a snitch so that you could go in and drink. It's pretty much that way now, except with edgy comedy. Like, you will find gigs, but they're all, like, you know, underground and secret and all this stuff, but mm -hmm. you, they always end up selling out, selling out all the tickets because there is a demand and people want that. And I think now that we live in the age where it feels more forbidden and more taboo to tell edgy jokes, there's even more of a demand. So you should probably capitalise on that for the time being. Yeah. Until until your generation take over and get away, get rid of all the politically correct bullshit. Cause see when that day comes, <coughs> uh, edgy, edgy comedy will die because nobody will care anymore. Mm -hmm. Like back in the sixties, swearing on stage was considered funny. You know, if you if the punchline was simply a swear word, like that was considered edgy. But see now nobody gives a shit about that. It's considered boring as far as comedy goes, mm -hmm. and uh, edgy comedy will one day be considered the same way. So. Capital, capitalize on it while you can. Yeah, well, I I hope so. I hope. Well, God knows what happens if if uh, accelerationists get their way. I might have to take a break from the comedy to go fight in a civil war. <coughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious if his opinion has changed on the implementation of a second amendment for the United Kingdom. Um. Yeah, my opinion has changed on that. I maybe wouldn't implement it in the same manner, but I do feel that uh, British people should be allowed to own guns to protect themselves from tyranny. Mm -hmm. I do, I do feel that. I uh, I agree with that. Um, oh yeah, and you got married recently. How did that go? Oh no, that's uh, that's next month. Oh. That's next month. Right. Aye, aye, I'm gonna be take taking a month off so that I can go and do marriage shit. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on having uh, any kids? Yeah, 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 we plan on having a few kids. Need, need to continue the white race somehow. <laughs> Somebody's going to clip that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, I think uh, I think that's it for the interview. Um, it was pretty good. Thanks for coming on. No, it was good. It was good to finally be able to chat to you. I, I really like what you do. Thanks. All right. Um, this <laughs> this is your lieutenant signing off.